some artist. Today we're going to be doing another comic book haul. So we're starting off with, uh, this is the Power Rangers meets, meets the Ninja Turtles number four. Uh, I did get the conclusion on the last hauls uh, video, but I'm trying to collect all of these variant covers here with the turtles holding the different Power Rangers heads. I think I still need one of the Black Ranger, maybe. But, so, I'll show you a little bit inside. And, yeah, as I said previously, I really enjoy uh, this story. It's just kind of a fun little story here. And you can see that the turtles actually get the Power Rangers powers in this this issue is the first time they appear in their suits. And that's the Power Rangers in like their street clothes there. also requested to do more uh, tracing as well as a uh, sound finale so we're going to do that in this video as well so we'll be taking it slow and doing some uh, tracing as well and then the end of the video we'll see the sound finale This cover has a nice texture to it, so some added sounds as well. So next we have uh, Detective Comics number 1023. This is the uh, Lee Bermejo cover. And he's just been doing such a really great job with all these variants here. Uh, we can see lots of great texture work there with the wrinkles and the um, cape. As well as on the suit too. and stuff and this is the cardstock cover and so we're starting to see more of the uh, the Joker in here gearing up for the Joker war that will um <laughs> look at the name of that title there <laughs> uh, gears up for the Joker war here so uh, this might be the official prelude here I know they've been teasing it through several books. Now oh, this looks like it's all caskets, maybe. But I've really been enjoying this artist. He has a, a unique sensibility here, Brad Walker. I feel like he adds bits of realism as well as a little bit of nods to the animated series with their visual look. Just how we can pull off the grimace. 
us like that and stuff. You can see certain angles of the animated series in that. Ah, oh, here we go. Lincoln March. Wow. A very prevalent member of the uh, Court of Owls here. So that's a minor spoiler. So apologies for that. But yeah, this is what I've said before. You can see like the animated look here in Batman with the slits in his eyes and stuff. So really solid stuff. Oh, I gotta end it on that one there. Look at that spread. Batman laying ways to criminals. Love it. And then here's another nice little um thing that'll keep in your mind the whole COVID situation. seeing if it had the um the other thing in the back where it shows Batman and Superman and their respective uh, fortresses I've seen that promo in a few of the books curious what the regular cover was for that one. Um, I've been getting the regular and the variants a lot. I guess I have it for Detective, though. So next we have this is Batman the Adventures Continue, number two. And this is um, the animated series continued. And this is the regular cover. This is the Sean Gordon Murphy cover. And his White Knight universe has been doing a lot of references to the animated series and so it's nice that they had him do a cover before you know the animated series continues books here and so this is another one drawn by Ty Templeton Ty the guy as they used to call him on the um letters column. I have yet to meet him in person. Um, he was due out at Emerald City a few times, but, you know, he had life complications. Hopefully one day I'll get him to sign my Batman Adventures number one. I didn't even know this one. So these are all by Jay Tomasi here. Or, wow, not Tomasi. Uh, Tony S. Daniel, rather.
of his, his watercolors and just his cartoony feel and everything. I was surprised the Sean Gordon Murphy one wasn't a variant cover as well. But uh, yeah, so this kind of just has the whole crew here. And I always try to collect his covers when I see him. some more action here. The first bit of the story seemed to not have much in the way of our costumed hero here. Look at this. Deathstroke is stuck a sword in his thigh here. And then in the previous issue, Harley's throat got slit by punchline as well. on the cape there. Francesco Martinez variant. Yes, and this is the cover stock, which is many of you. 
you know by now. It's a dollar more than your standard issue. So we see a lot of darkness here. But we can kind of make out where a bunch line. shop did have like the character variants I was talking about too. They didn't have, I think it's 92 is the punchline one, which shows her on like a flat purple background and then there's like sketching of her and then like a regular, like fully rendered an Im image of her in front. I do have the common variant but the other one it's like 1 in 25 or 1 in 50 and those were marked at uh, $50 but they had the one for the designer, as well as like the broker or whoever the other guy is. I halfway want to get those two. But I think the main one to do that with would probably be the punchline one. I just really hope they don't end up killing her off. By the way, if you're following all of her issues, make sure to get Harley Quinn 75. That's the end of the Harley Quinn series. And it has the big showdown between her and Harley in it. coming up soon. Next is Young Justice number 16. And I'm not familiar with who's even on here. I see La Fuente. Last name sounds familiar, but I don't really know this art style here too well. Darko La Fuente. I am liking the um, art here by Scott God Lewiski, I guess is his name. Still doesn't beat old school Young Justice for me, but I have been enjoying this. At least for the visual side of things, they're still like trying to have them stake their claim in the new DC universe here. So that's kind of getting muddied up a little bit. Because I could have sworn from Rebirth that that Superman uh, is the one from the 90s, the Jurgens one, and he doesn't have a recollection of this Superboy. Which he should if that's the Superman from the 90s who came back from the dead. Next we have a Superman number 23. I believe this is a Brian Hitch variant. He's been doing a lot of the Superman variants recently. And yeah, Kevin McGuire is still doing the interiors. I think he started fairly recently on the book picking it up so if 
you've noticed this pattern yet anything Bendis writes, he likes to have the books that he writes overlap and reference each other. So if you notice between this, uh, Legion of uh, Superheroes, I believe, um, Young Justice, Action Comics, they all have everyone kind of doing guest spots on the show. Or the book, rather, but it might as well be a show when uh, Bendis writes it here. And this is a funny panel here. Look, this kid's posing with Superman. But they're just taking a picture of the kid and not him with Superman. But that was kind of funny. But Bendis always finds a way for this stuff to reference back to each other. Which can be a bit annoying if you're not reading everything he's writing. stairs here. I'm sure they've been aided with some sort of drawing program, but it's whatever. It's still interesting to look at. Sometimes it's a little more difficult, but it makes the um, it makes a nice sound when it slides in there. So, and that's really what we're trying to go for here. So, now if you followed me from the beginning, you'll notice I don't tape them anymore on camera because this mic here is too sensitive for that. So it's very very coarse when I try to tear tape. Next we have Turtles Urban Legends number 24. And I do believe it's almost over. It seems like I keep saying that every time. Uh, this might be part of the... No, it's not part of the cover. There we go. But it's just such a weird, strange story. Not ever how you'll see the turtles in the um, uh, cartoons, that's for sure. So, that's kind of the cool factor of it, is just seeing this really violent, gritty, bizarre take on the turtles. Although at times it could be a little better. It's interesting, to say the least. trace here a little bit. And this kind of has a different sort of a texture to it. like a little grit, but I don't think it's on purpose. I think it's just kind of the paper quality. They're not trying for like a prestige format.
coming week. At the very least, I'll be able to get um, my reading of The Dark Knight Part 3 out. My family came back, and I've just been spending time with them and stuff like that. So, And then this past Thursday, when I normally do the live streams, I actually had a ticket to see but to be a part of a, a Jim Carrey live stream Zoom phone call. Uh, it's a big group of us, though, so it's not like I was talking to him directly, but... So, I did that. So, it was him, uh, his co-author on his biography that's coming out, or, yeah, I guess, like, that's kind of a biography, but kind of not. As well as uh, Judy Bloom, they introduced them, and a few other people were on there. So that's what I did on Thursday, and then I'm getting a book mailed to me that has his signature in it, so. So as you'll see here, this is the deceased dead planet spinoff here, and this is, I guess, technically the third spinoff, although you didn't need to read Unkillables to get this, as long as you just read Deceased, the previous original miniseries, I think you'll be in good shape for this. So this is the movie cover variant based off of Blade Runner. So, actually, this wasn't one I pre-ordered on purpose. I pre-ordered a different cover, but I like this one too just because I enjoy Blade Runner so much. I'm trying to figure out where we can trace here. Uh, the arm kind of does like a thing here. Void Doctor Fate. Trace around Constantine here. And then they have the roll switch too. This is, um, um, I'm blanking on his name in the movie. Harrison Ford's character in the movie here. Agent Decker, I believe, is. And then the android right here. So they have the woman and then the so it's switched. So let's see if they have... I don't even know who's doing the uh, artwork on this. miniseries on the channel since this is out now shouldn't it discourage sales on the uh, previous story that much because that's why I don't read them right out of the gate I don't want to discourage people from buying um, the copies from their shops where they're like oh I can just watch them read it on this channel and then I don't have to buy it I want everyone to support you know creators and their shops all that good stuff so in order to do that, I kind of have to pull back on doing readings until I feel like they um, won't really hurt their sales. This is a gold page here to spread. So on the art here, pencils is Trevor Harrison. I don't know who that is. And this is uh, Ben Oliver did this cover here. Deceased miniseries. And then I might try to do like basically where there's me reading one DC thing and one Marvel thing at a time. And then I have to trade off between whispering and soft speaking, so it'll probably be a soft spoken reading.
cover. This is the David Finch cover for Deceased Dead Planet, number one. Which I just love David Finch's work so much. And this, oddly enough, wasn't the cover I had originally pulled either, so I was like, yeah, why not? My total was kind of low today anyway, so... This is the Francesco Mattina variant here. So as you can see, they're kind of partial zombie. And then, you know, the normal hero. So you can see, like, the muscle tissue and stuff here. So we'll just trace the strips here. This, this is kind of like a summary thing to catch you up on different Mar Mar <laughs> Marvel series. So you can get ready to read the current issues here. And I might go into greater detail with this and show off the whole thing. Just to encourage you, if you are interested in picking up some Marvel but don't know where to hop in. This is kind of like a little bit of a catch-up, and then see this, and now you're ready to read, and then whichever series it is. I definitely feel that this is misleading here. They're showing off the, um, the cover images for Black Cat when the interiors are not by J. Scott Campbell at all. So I might do like a little just brief overview of this in a video by itself just to encourage you to pick up some Marvel stuff if you're on the fence about it. some more of my overflow from the previous week when I was here by myself. So we got some more Assassin's Creed volumes here, which as I said, I want to do um, like a video 100% devoted to Assassin's Creed, so I just don't want to go into too much detail here. Got some art books and stuff too, so um, we'll trace this though. This is nice. And 
this makes that nice shallow. And this is the first volume for the um, Titan Comics series here. So I had to wait for this to come in before I read any of the other ones. This one takes place in modern day too, or it could just be just like the games too, where it's, you know, feet in both camps. But yeah, the art tends to be on the more realistic side here. So that's the beginning of this um, storyline here. The beginning of the whole thing, technically. They had the regular line Assassin's Creed, and then um, Templars came out at the same time. I think one was like a companion book. And then this is the conclusion to this character's arc here. This is volume three, so. This one, since this is the conclusion of everything here. Oh, look at that image, that's cool. I'm assuming that's a variant cover there. But it has more of the history type stuff in here. And sketches and things like that. And then a cover gallery in the back. This is how they closed out the whole line was with the Uprising series, which this is all about modern day assassins, I believe. This one's its own thing. It was later in the reading order. So this is Locus. And this has a different art style than the other ones. See, kind of like a thicker inking on it. 
put this right here. Now you have that weird angle on the eye where you don't see the full shape, but it's half the shape. And then, like, I just really love the, a lot of the covers a whole lot. They did some unique, interesting things. I did remember I didn't much care for uh, this particular issue here. Uh, this was not an artist that did a lot of the uh, Batman issues here. They kind of give them like extra, a little a more of a character, which you know it's cartoon, but still you know more so than I would like. I like, I love these covers here. Here's one of the penguin with all the birds here. And I might try to do some readings of these too. This one was a really popular one here too. When, um, Poison Ivy controls Robin. This is a very risque issue. Which, as a maturing youth, I definitely was uh, more in tune to, you know, the more, I guess, sexualized side of it. Even though it's the animated series, like I said prior, they were able to do a lot more in the way of um, things they couldn't typically do on the show. So. And then even like with Talia's chest being more exposed and stuff. So they were just like little subtleties like that. And then yeah, the same. So I love this cover. He's in like a wax museum, but you don't know that when you see this cover here. more of the same. I remember I was super excited when in this issue it starts out and they show this kid who's stealing the Wonder Bread or like grounded it in this universe you know. But I always hated the cover because they didn't put the right color for Bane's blue pants here. Yeah, he always just wore blue pants you know. And then this has the um, sought after, they call this the first comic appearance of the Phantasm, which it really isn't. Because they had a movie adaptation of Mask of the Phantasm, but this book by itself usually goes for $100 or $200 right now. Because they consider it the first comic appearance of the Phantasm, so technically it's not, but to all the speculators it's considered very important so and then like this was another one I loved like the glare from the light on the flashlights and stuff and then this was another one with a lot of the <laughs> more curves that I appreciated as a budding teen and then stuff like that so see that even though my mom wasn't trying to keep me away from how hyper um, scantily clad women were and like X-Men and stuff they were still slipping it in here too so and then this was the uh, final volume Batman Adventures here, Batman and Robin Adventures. And this has the annual here with Satana. Which I, I couldn't ever get over her top hat she has here, especially on the figure. It's like too small for her head. Another 
two-phase story in here. Love that cover. And then this book is going for a pretty penny too because of the Batgirl cover on it as well. So they're nice to have if you don't want to shell over big bucks for everyone who's been sitting on these animated books and they underprinted them. Yeah, I love this. They had the flaming UPC there. Yeah, where is it? I guess it was the other volume. I was looking for the Joker story in here. is really well done so I might do some Batman animated readings too we'll have to see so next I'll take some time out here to do some um, sound finale so we'll do that and if you dip out now you'll have a super slumber thanks
you want to see. And as always, you have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.